Hello, scholars, and welcome to the third and last session on drawing a three-dimensional scene using one-point linear perspective. I'm Mr. Sanchez, and I am the visual arts uh, educator at Hurd, Virginia L. Hurd uh, Elementary STEM Academy. Now, the goals for this lesson is to briefly uh, go over the concepts that we learned in lesson number two. And you, you re remember that in lesson number two, we learned how to create a scene using uh, a vanishing point and a, and a horizon line. Uh, present and discuss a completed scene. So you're going to be seeing how I completed my scene. Uh, present and discuss, and discuss how to create scenes from various different uh, viewpoints. And to demonstrate uh, a unique technique called uh, one point linear perspective, but without a horizon line. That's going to be pretty interesting. We're using the same uh, Georgia uh, standards. Materials you'll need are the same. Remember, you'll need uh, paper and pencil. You'll need a straight edge, uh, not necessarily to measure, unless you want to make it very accurate. Uh, sharpened pencil, I would have one or two available. And if you have a separate eraser, that's preferred, but you can also use your pencil eraser. Uh, last time we discussed various uh, methods to find and draw your horizon line and your uh, vanishing point. We also discussed how to create an urban scene, uh, a three-dimensional urban scene, using that horizon line and the vanishing point in the middle of the surface, um, and how to enhance that scene uh, by adding details. Things to remember, things to keep in mind. Parallel lines that are parallel, this way and this way, that are looking right at you, will not be affected by the vanishing point uh, or this uh, 3D illusion. However, all the horizontal lines in this style that are facing the vanishing point will be affected. The ones that are at the top will lean down. The ones at the bottom will tend to come up. Remember, it's an illusion. As you walk down the street, you'll notice they stay parallel, but as you look down the street, it will look like they're bending. I hope you were able to finish the scene we started in lesson two uh, by adding details. If you didn't, I'm going to show you some uh, details that I added to mine to kind of inspire you to finish yours. Now let's look at a completed uh, session that we started last session. And let me get my cam on. And so uh, last week we started, uh, we ended with something similar to this. We had probably gotten right up to here. And this is how I started um, working on the other side. Now, this is not actually uh, the scene that we worked on. This is the one that I showed you as an example. This shows you how to, I started working on the right side. Now, I'm going to show you the actual one that we were working on. This is it. This is how I completed my, my uh, scene. And I'm saying completed tongue in cheek, really, because every time I look at this scene, I think of something else to add to it. So don't, don't be afraid to do that. Just continue to add to your scene. Now, you notice what I did was, remember I told you that the way to finish your scene is to think about the character of the buildings that you want to show. Notice that we started with this vanishing point, and I ended up with coming with the idea of creating a second street here that was parallel to this uh, walkway and created a monument of sorts. Then I put some trees, put mountains in the background, clouds, and then here I put this tree to kind of uh, make the corner look a little more realistic. Uh, put a corner post here, and obviously I could add more things to this. Like, for example, I could put uh, the lights, right, the crossing lights and so on to make it look more realistic. Uh, put various different types of buildings and openings. You can see that each one has a separate function. So that's what's really going to uh, help you to finish uh, the look of your urban street is using your imagination, or look at photographs to, to help you uh, with trying to figure out what the buildings should look like. Are they made fully of glass? Do they have concrete? Uh, do they have some parts that have brick and so on? And that will help you with the creation of your scene and finishing it. Remember that anything that is on this side 
is going to stay vertical or horizontal. Same thing happens with entranceways and uh, the like. But when it's on this side, notice how even the bricks are following that rule. Now let's go back a little bit and we're going to talk a little bit more about linear perspective and three-dimensional scene. Uh, the thing about the three-dimensionality is that the, the scene is going to change very, very dramatically uh, when you change the horizon line and the vanishing point or both. And so I, I want to show you some examples of that. And uh, we're going to start a little bit backwards here. We're going to start at the bottom. If you see my cursor, this is what we learned to do last time. We had the vanishing point uh, right in the middle, and we had the horizon line right in the middle. Although this is not an urban scene, it follows the same example as the urban scene that we did. Now, coming over here, this looks a lot more like what we were doing, except one difference that the horizon line is no longer in the middle. This is the middle right here. Notice how it's below. So with a low horizon line, what happens is the, all the horizontal lines seem to be going down towards that point. There's very few lines that go up, and they're very shallow. Okay. This one shows you uh, the horizon line going higher above the center point. And you notice if you look at these buildings here, you can actually see more rooftops because the horizon line has gone higher and you have less sky but more ground. Here you have more sky, less ground, and here you have half and half. Now we go to one that's completely different. If you look at this one, this is called the bird's eye view. I call it the hero, superhero view, because I like uh, superheroes. Uh, Black Panther being my favorite. Um, so it, here, there really isn't a vanishing point, a uh, uh, horizon line, is there? But there is a vanishing point. So to draw this uh, and make sure that you have the buildings go in the right direction, you always build a what's called an implied horizon line. It's not really a horizon line, but it's a line that you can orient on to do your drawings. And when you place your vanishing point, what happens is, if you can see right there, something changes. Notice that here all the horizontal lines are going to that vanishing point. Oops, let's go back a little bit. Kind of a flip of the finger there. And in this case, these aren't horizon lines, uh, correction, ho horizontal lines, are they? They're vertical lines of the buildings. Uh, if you look up here, they look like rooftops and then the actual vertical lines that go down the buildings are actually bending in like that. So let me show you uh, some drawings here that show you uh, how the vanishing point, where it's located, and the horizon line is really going to change your drawing. All right, let's go to our cam. And here's an example, uh, unfinished example, of course. So you can see all the vectors that are normally erased. And you can see how the vanishing point is no longer in the middle. It's actually shifted to the right. Horizon line is still in the middle. But notice how these buildings seem to be longer. And these seem to be shorter when you're looking in this direction. Okay. Now, similar to the top left drawing, here is a, an urban scene, and of course, there's my superhero there, China Bennett. Um, and you can see that all the vertical, what's supposed to be vertical lines, are now going towards that one vanishing point. All horizontal lines, however, on that side, stay horizontal. All lines that are on the top, looking straight at you, like on the roofs, all the vertical lines and horizontal lines stay exactly that way. But the sides of these boxes, notice, are heading towards that one vanishing point. Keep that in mind, okay? All right, at this time, and we're going to move on here, 
we're going to be looking at a really neat and different uh, way to draw a three-dimensional uh, urban scene. And what's really different about this is that up to this point, we've been talking about horizon lines and vanishing points. We're going to keep talking about vanishing point, but this time we're going to eliminate the horizon line. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so if you look at this scene, you notice where's the horizon line? It disappeared. Well, in reality, the vanishing point is the only thing you really need to draw this scene. Imagine yourself being a little mouse, or in this case, if you're talking about superheroes, uh, think about Ant-Man or the Wasp. They're standing there looking up at a building. And you probably have done this too, downtown Savannah, or you go to a city like Atlanta and you stand next to a building, you look up, you'll see that effect. As a matter of fact, it feels like, like you're moving a little bit, you feel a little bit of the gravity. So that's the effect we're trying to get here. And this, you see this a lot in uh, comic book drawings uh, and a lot of 3D uh, cartoons. It's uh, this effect of looking straight up and kind of giving some depth uh, straight up. So to do that, you notice that all the vertical lines are heading to that one point. All the horizontal lines stay exactly the way they should be. The technique to draw this is probably going to be one of the simplest uh, ways to do three-dimensional uh, linear perspective. So we're going to start doing that right now. You get my paper here. All right. And you should have paper, your pencil, and your ruler ready to go. Now, to start this off, it would be a good idea to figure out the measurement where your uh, vanishing point is going to be. However, there is a way to do it without a ruler. Pretty much two fingers, and that would give you the height that you need. And then using your hands like that, if you don't have a ruler, that will give you almost the middle of your paper. Okay. In my case, I want to be a little bit more precise. And so I'm going to take my ruler, and I'm going to measure. It's eight and a half across. So it's four and a quarter right there. And I'm going to create my vanishing point. Now remember, vanishing points are for you. They're a guide for you. So you don't make them very strong. I'm going to make it thicker so you can see it on the screen. But I would never make my vanishing point that thick, OK? I make it just a dot so that when I erase it, there's no ghost image, okay? I just want you to remember that. Now, when we're making our, uh, our drawing, you want to initially think about the center building, okay? Don't worry about what it's going to be. Just consider how wide it's going to be. And then everything else is built from there, okay? So we're going to start with our center building. and. I'm going to say that I'm going to start here. Now, again, if you want to be very precise, if you want to be an architect and you want to do precision, you can measure the width and make sure that those dots are in the proper place. But right now, we're just going to kind of eyeball it. And I want my first building to go like this. OK. Again, when you draw your vectors, remember to hold your pencil up here so you're not drawing a very thick and dark vector, because those are hard to erase. I'm going to make lines harder than they should be, or darker than they should be, so that you can see them on the camera. But when you're doing this for yourself, very ultralight touch. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do it once the way you should do it. So light that only I can see it, OK? Now I'm going to do it so that you guys can see it. There we go. OK, so actually, you have a line leaning to the left. Then starting from your vanishing point, again, draw another line to the right. Now we have two vectors creating what looks like a triangle, OK? Now we're going to go left and right of that and just simply create another space. And these don't have to be the same width. So you can make one wide and you can make one thinner, OK? So now we have something that looks like a tent or a teepee. And we're going to add one more line to this. 
And in this time, it's going to go off the paper. Now, you notice that I'm going off the, this is the edge right here. I'm going off that edge. And so it's going right off the edge, holding my ruler tight so it doesn't move. And remember that trick that I showed you last time? Put some masking tape on the back so it doesn't slip on you. And I'm going to take this one off this point here and draw my final line. Now, does it mean I can end there? No. I can actually add more buildings, uh, and, but I want to leave some open space so I can actually put some enhancements and things like that. So now we go back to the center and we decide now how tall we want this building to be, okay? Now this, I want it to be kind of a fairly tall building, so I'm gonna go straight as high as I can right there, leaving some space between the vanishing point, and I'm actually gonna put VP here, so you know that's a vanishing point. And I'm going to draw my horizontal line across, okay? That can be a strong line because that's actually the roof of your building. This is going to be the base, okay? Now, from there, I go either left or right. Doesn't matter where you go. I'm going to vary the heights of the buildings. So I'm going to bring this one down low, and I'm going to make an effort to make this as horizontal as I can. There it is. And then I'm going to go to the left, and I'm going to go kind of halfway between these two and draw a horizontal line there. All right. So now I'm going to go over here. I want this one to go a little bit higher, but not as high as that one. So I'm going to go right in between those two horizontal lines, hold down my ruler. And this is one of the biggest problems some of my students have, is every time they draw a horizontal line, they, they kind of try to speed through this, and they don't make it as, as horizontal as they can. If it, if it, it's not going to be perfect, so don't worry about trying to be perfect. But one way that you can keep it horizontal is checking the lines on your ruler, okay? And making sure to use them on the edges of your paper to keep your ruler steady, okay? Uh, and this one, I'm actually gonna take it down a notch and make a short building right down here, okay? And I'm gonna straighten out my ruler and take my time, check and make sure it's horizontal, and voila. We've got everything we need here. Now, it's a good idea to start getting rid of all the vectors you don't need, okay? So we're going to get rid of this one line right here. And again, I, I did my drawing stronger. I did the line stronger than I normally would. So you may still see some ghost images on my lines, okay? All right, so I'm gonna erase this one up here. I actually don't need any of those vectors anymore. And it's a good idea to do that at this point because you're gonna be drawing more vectors, although inside the buildings you may have to draw them outside also. So it's a good idea to get rid of all the stuff you don't need, okay? I'm gonna shake that loose. And if you have a brush, go ahead and use your brush to take all that stuff off the paper, okay? now. Once you have your, oops, there we go. <laughs> Thought that was a brush. So once you have that, you can see that you have the outlines of the buildings right there. One, two, three, four, and five. We have five buildings. So first thing we want to try to do is we notice that this building still looks two-dimensional, doesn't it? Uh, if I leave it like that, it's not going to look right. It's not going to look three-dimensional. So what you do is take your ruler aim it towards this corner. Okay, let me bring it up. Aim it towards that corner right there. And draw a line until it touches another line. And in this case, it's the center building. Now, if I fill that in with some shading, you can see that it looks three-dimensional. That's just to so that we can visually see that it's now a three-dimensional building. Now, just like we did before uh, with the previous time, we're going to see the width of the door, okay? So 
to determine that, you establish two points as even as possible. If you want to measure, you can do that. And then we're going to do vectors to the top of the building and stop. And remember, I'm doing it ultra uh, dark, but you need to do it very light because these vectors, part of them are going to be erased. Okay? Using your vanishing point all the way to the top of the building. Now it's a matter of deciding what type of building it's going to be. So if it's going to be an office building or an apartment building. We're going to make a tall door, so basically just horizontal line across. And then if I want to do like an entranceway, I'm going to do another shorter line across here. And then just connect that to the vanishing point. And I'll show you what that looks like so that the ruler's out of the way. Okay? So you can see that I've connected it to the vanishing point. Okay? There's the doorway. Now, we simply take these corners and connect it to those corners. Diagonal line to the left, diagonal line to the right. And we put a handle in here, and there's our doorway, right? Let me see if you can see it a little bit better. Everybody see that? All right, so now uh, we're going to use these lines as guides for the windows that are going to go up, but we're going to need a second line to actually create the windows. So we're going to start the windows right about there. Again, a vector up, and on this side right about there, and a vector up. And then simply start drawing the windows on each side by simply doing horizontal lines across the two lines, actually the vectors that we have there. Now what I do is I actually, once I draw the initial bottom of the windows, you can see I'm erasing the stuff that I don't need. Then uh, I actually put my ruler upside down so that I can see where I'm drawing the horizontal line. Okay? So I'm going to put it upside down there. I'm going to do some tall windows. So we'll do that. Now remember that in between the windows, it's a floor. So you have to leave a gap. And that is where the next row of windows begins, or the second floor. Now I'm going to do partially all the way up here so that you can see what happens. Remember that as you go up, now the illusion, it's really the same illusion. Things look like they're going left and right towards that vanishing point. But another thing that's happening, remember the sidewalks. Uh, and as you recall, let me show you that in my drawing. Remember that in the sidewalks, the rectangles become shorter and shorter in the distance because another thing that happens in perspective is that lines come closer together, especially the horizontal lines. So that the same thing happens here. So as you draw your windows, they can't all be the same size. And as you go up, the gaps between the windows and the windows themselves, the gaps have to be shorter, okay? Okay, and so I'm going to actually shade part of the window so you can see where the gaps are and where the window are. Everybody see that? Okay, so now we have a gap. We're going to create our next set of windows. And we're going to shade it in. And this is just a preliminary shading, just to make sure we don't, we keep everything uh, in order. And then later you can erase that or add color to it and so on. And notice as the higher I go up on the lines, the shorter the gap is. And the closer 
the two lines come together on the windows. Everybody see how that's happening? Okay. Okay, and then you would continue that all the way up. And as I showed you earlier, uh, in this case, I, showed, I chose to do two columns. In this case, I chose to do just one column, okay? So what you do is decide uh, the entrance ways, as you can see, are different, okay? Each building, for example, this is an art gallery. This is a parking building. There seems to be a steeple behind this one. So that's, that's something that uh, you can use your imagination to, to put in there. I actually put kind of a, an opening there to make this look more artsy, to make it look more like an art gallery. This seems to look more like an office building or apartment building, and more details could be added on there. For example, I could add three-dimensionality by adding a line there and adding a line across and adding some shading, as you can see. So the shading is really going to help you with that three-dimensionality. Uh, once you're done with your basic buildings, then you can start thinking about what's going to be behind in the scene. For example, you could draw clouds in the background. You can draw an airplane or helicopter going by. If it's a su superhero scene, you could show uh, maybe uh, somebody like Spider-Man crawling up the building or something like that. Okay, So that's pretty much the technique. That is one point perspective, all the vertical lines go towards that point, all the horizontal lines stay straight, and don't forget that if you have a building that's exposed, you have to create a three-dimensionality. Now, there's another way I could do this building, is I could erase part of it, like this, and then simply using the vanishing point, make it a narrower building, and then you would see a space in between there, okay? So that's another way you can do that. All right, so. In the series of three lessons, uh, we've discovered uh, what perspective is uh, all about, and I've demonstrated several methods of, uh, and techniques of how you can create three-dimensional uh, scenes in, uh, in an urban environment. Now, perspective is not limited to urban environments, and it's actually all around us. It can also be applied to the natural world. Um, the only difference is you're going to be dealing with shapes that are uh, natural, and they are not geometric. Uh, but you can apply it to the, uh, the same uh, theories and same techniques to the scenes. Now, there's a lot more that you need to discover. As a matter of fact, uh, I have, hopefully, I have this queued up. Uh, right here, I'm gonna be keeping this up for a couple of minutes uh, to allow you to copy these um, URLs down. These are videos that can help you, but you can find this by yourself going online and looking up one-point linear perspective and two-point linear perspective, which is a step higher um, uh, you can learn basically how to create an urban scene from a corner looking at a building from both sides. So let me show you uh, something that I've queued up here. There we go. So this video actually will show you pretty much the same things that I'm showing you. Uh, I'm going to let it play for a little bit. So of, of the wall there, just straight across and then a line that goes straight up until we run into the top of the building. Just okay, like that. Bring it a little bit forward so you can see against the more. edge of the buildings here. Three lines, top of the tree, middle of the tree, and there we go. And there you can see how he applies uh, the same perspective um, techniques that we've learned to trees, okay? Same thing could be done with fences and so on. Uh, so feel free to go online 
And please uh, don't stop here. I want you to continue um, looking for more opportunities to learn about perspective. Uh, notice that when we did our perspective, we actually applied more than one thing. We did overlapping. Remember, that was part of it. Uh, we did size. No, notice that just by default, when you do linear perspective, whatever's close to you is bigger. Whatever's further away from you gets smaller. And notice how it goes up on the paper when it's getting far away from you. Okay, we're going to leave this here for a little bit so you can have a little bit of time to copy some of the URLs. Uh, and again, if you don't get to copy the whole thing, just uh, do a Google search for linear, one point linear perspective. Also, once you've got that mastered, you may want to wander into two point perspective. And I'm going to show you very quickly what that would look like. Okay, I have it poured out here. And there is the two-point perspective. Of course, it's unfinished. But uh, the difference in the two-point perspective is pretty obvious. You have a corner here, and you have two points, one there, one there, no longer one point in the middle. So the lines, the horizontal lines, are actually heading towards either of those two points, creating this effect that the corner is coming towards you, okay? So again, do not stop with these three lessons. I urge you to continue your journey, your learning journey, and above all, keep using your imagination and stay creative. Thank you.